change flowed the blessings of the modern swing. Control and the combination of power and accuracy, as Varden himself demonstrates. He also discarded the bludgeons of his trade and built himself clubs which were light and designed for artistry rather than destruction. With his new style and his new clubs, he pioneered the concept of clubhead speed rather than sheer muscular effort. Having reinvented the swing, he rewrote the record books, winning six opens and dominating the world of golf for a generation. From this change flowed the blessings of the modern swing. Control and the combination of power and accuracy, as Varden himself demonstrates. He also discarded the bludgeons of his trade and built himself clubs which were light and designed for artistry rather than destruction. With his new style and his new clubs, he pioneered the concept of clubhead speed rather than sheer muscular effort. Having reinvented the swing, he rewrote the record books, winning six opens and dominating the world of golf for a generation. From this change flowed the blessings of the modern swing. Control and the combination of power and accuracy, as Varden himself demonstrates. He also discarded the bludgeons of his trade and built himself clubs which were light and designed for artistry rather than destruction. With his new style and his new clubs, he pioneered the concept of clubhead speed rather than sheer muscular effort. Having reinvented the swing, he rewrote the record books, winning six opens and dominating the world of golf for a generation. Varden's example inspired two contemporaries. On the first tee, England's Harry Varden in his prime. He had already won four British Opens and would win two more. And the local favorite, the Scott James Braid, who would eventually win five British Opens himself. An article in the Scotsman newspaper said that Varden and Braid played before an avid crowd of 3,000 and, quote, to the accompaniment of the horror of cinematographers. The article reported that the officials of the club, ably assisted though they were by a detachment of Midlothian constabulary, experienced considerable difficulty in keeping clear the line of play. That was a polite way of saying that the crowd, wanting badly for their man Braid to beat the Englishman Varden, was almost out of control. Note this young man attending a flagstick which curiously was tasseled like the business end of a mop. Here's the great Varden in trouble, his ball nestled against a wall. No relief there, the great man quickly plays a creative shot. This lady had enough clothing on to cover five or six female gallery members today. A key incident of the match, Braid's ball rolls onto the green. Varden is away, but Braid's ball is on his line. That was called a stymie in those days in match play. Varden could not require Braid to lift his ball, so he attempts to negotiate the stymie, but the balls collide. Tough luck for old Harry. Braid then coolly holds his putt and rather contemptuously conceded Varden's for a half. The match ended all square, tied after 18 holes. The stroke play scores were reported as 68, quite remarkable for 1904. 